Let's take a look at example one from section 2.3. We're asked to solve the first order linear differential equation dy dx minus 3y equals to zero. In starting to solve this, it's important to make sure that it's in standard form, and it is, so that part's already done for us. So this is in standard form. We can identify this function p of x. So p of x is the coefficient of the y term in standard form. So p of x is equal to, to negative 3. And we have to recall the expression for the integrating factor. The integrating factor we said was e to the integral of p of x dx. So in this case, it's going to be equal to e to the integral of negative 3 dx. Well, that's simply going to be equal to e, and then the antiderivative of negative 3 is negative 3x. So for this particular first order linear ODE, this is going to be our integrating factor. The very next step is we're going to multiply the entire differential equation, both sides, by this integrating factor. So that's going to look like this. So multiply every single term by that integrating factor. What we end up getting on the left hand side, we said that the whole goal and the reason why we end up doing this is that we should end up with an exact derivative on the left hand side. And the exact derivative we get is supposed to be our integrating factor, which is the e to the negative 3x, times our solution function, which is y. And on the right-hand side, this is going to be equal to 0 times e to the negative 3x. Well, that's still going to be equal to, to 0. I'm only going to do this once because we've already symbolically did this um, in the previous part of this lecture, but we already, you know, mechanically showed why this function is the total derivative of the thing above, but it can't hurt to, to check that, just to kind of convince you even further. But if I were to do d dx of e to the negative 3xy, again, this would be a, a product rule. It would be the derivative of e to the negative 3x, which is going to be from the chain rule, negative 3 e to the negative 3x times y, plus now leave the e to the negative 3x alone, and then the derivative of y with respect to x we would call dy dx. And again, you can compare this expression to this expression. It's exactly the same. So indeed, we were able to write the left-hand side as a, a total derivative. And now the benefit to that is that means that we can get the y by itself by simply removing and getting y outside of that derivative, and we can do so by integrating both sides. So what we're going to do next is let's integrate uh, both sides, and we'll do so with respect to um, x. So I'm going to do the antiderivative of the left-hand side dx by doing the antiderivative of the right-hand side dx. On the left-hand side, the antiderivative and the derivative cancel. So we simply get e to the negative 3x times y is equal to, again, normally you have a constant of integration there. We're always going to kind of lump the, the constant of integration on the other side. Uh, but in this case, we just have the antiderivative of 0, which itself is just going to be a, um, a constant. And now lastly, we can get the, the y by itself by simply dividing both sides by e to the negative 3x. Divide by e to the negative 3x. These cancel. And there we have it. So y is equal to c divided by e to the negative 3x. And if we wanted to, we could obviously bring the um, exponent up, get it out of the denominator by switching the sign. And this is our solution. So not too bad, and I hope that the, the previous you know part of this chapter didn't scare you off. But again, 
typically when we try to solve these integrating factors, generally speaking, there'll be nice ones that you can do from stuff you learn in Calc 2. And if you kind of memorize, first of all, you have to know the formula for the integrating factor. You can use your notes, that's fine. But then also, too, memorizing what exact total derivative we get on the left-hand side. It's always the integrating factor times the function, and then integrating from there is the key to, to solving these. Let's do another one. So in example two, let's solve the uh, first order linear ODE dy dx minus uh, 3y equals 2 to 6. So this one isn't really a, a whole lot different than kind of the, the last one that we did. Okay. Um, in particular, the left-hand side is exactly the same. So if you look at, in this case, the, the p of xy, p of xy is again negative 3. So we get the same integrating factor, e to the integral of p of x dx is equal to e to the integral of negative 3 dx, which is simply equal to e to the negative 3x. So that's our integrating factor again. We would then go ahead and multiply both sides um, by this integrating factor. So I'm going to multiply by e to the negative 3x, essentially to every single term, both the, the right-hand side and the left-hand side. That turns the left-hand side into a total derivative. It's going to be e to the negative 3x, which is our integrating factor, times the function y. And this is equal to 6e to the negative 3x. The next step then would be to integrate both sides dx. So we're going to take the integral. of the derivative of e to the negative 3xy dx and the integral of e to negative 3x dx there. The left hand side as we saw before, the antiderivative and the derivative cancel. So we get e to the negative 3xy is going to be equal to now we have to do the antiderivative of 6e to the negative 3x. Let me kind of maybe do that as an aside. So from calc 2, we know we can pull the constant out first. This is e to the negative 3x dx, a little bit of u sub. Let u be the exponent. du would be negative 3 dx. So you would put a negative 3 factor on the inside by simultaneously dividing on the outside by negative 3. So we would get negative 2 times the antiderivative. This is now going to be e to the u du, which is going to be negative 2 e to the u plus some constant, which is negative 2 e back substitute to the negative 3x plus C. So our when we do the antiderivative of the right hand side we get two E to the negative three X whoops. Sorry about that. Two E to the negative three X plus C. And now we can go ahead and solve for our function Y to get our solution. To get the y by itself, we're going to divide every single term by e to the negative 3x. And 
And here's what we get. The e to the negative 3x's cancel. We get y equals, here the negative, yeah, the e to the negative 3x's cancel. So we have negative 2. And then we have plus some constant. And again, I'm going to bring that, that uh, term to the numerator. I'm going to reciprocate it to make it a positive e to the 3x. And we haven't really been focusing on it too much, but we probably should start to mention it a little bit more often. But this function has a domain of definition for all real numbers. So it's defined for, for all real numbers. So there we have it. Again, integrating factor is pretty nice. Not too, um, too difficult, I hope. Let's actually go ahead and check. Because it's been a while since we've checked one of these. Kind of going back to the, to the first chapter. But... Out of curiosity, let's actually just verify on this one anyway that it is a solution. And I think this is still one of the areas of math where even though this is a – you're starting to get into a higher level of mathematics, just the ability and the, the capacity to be able to check a solution sometimes gets highly underrated. So this is our function y. It's negative 2 plus um, c e to the 3x. If I take the derivative there – dy dx, this would be equal to the derivative of a constant is 0. The 3 would come down from the chain rule. And so dy dx is equal to 3c e to the 3x. Let's plug that into our original differential equation and see if indeed if this checks out. So everywhere I see a, a dy dx, I'm putting 3c e to the 3x. This is minus 3 times y, which is negative 2 plus c e to the 3x. Does this indeed equal to 6? Well, we have 3 c e to the 3x, distributing the negative 3 through, plus 6, plus, um, excuse me, minus, which has a negative sign, minus 3 c e to the 3x. And sure enough, these two cancel, and we're left with 6 equals 6. So we're good to go. We have definitely found the solution to that first-order linear ODE.